So next I figure we'll cover Lynx. Definitely a big year with the G5 chassis coming out. They released it in the trail sleds and they released it in the mountain sleds. They do still have the conventional T-Motion skid, but they moved the rear arm back on that to reduce front end lift, kind of like they did on the Pro RMK. And then there's the T-Motion XT. Obviously, I'm on my 2022 Lynx Rave RE. As far as that sled goes for 2023, not much change. Uh, graphics are a little bit different. I kind of like them. I think that they're a little bit more that like race edition look. Uh, but otherwise, even the colors are very similar. So it should be a good offering for those that maybe were waiting to see what everybody thought. And uh, now they want to try one out. But not too much new there. There's some crossover offerings now, so that's going to be the Xterras. You can get the Xterra in a 900R Turbo or in the 850E Tech. They're 146 inch tracks and they come with 2 inch lugs, but both run the trail front suspension. What I think is kind of cool about that, this is probably the closest we've seen BRP compete with the Assault. This is by far the, the best shot they have because they have the trail front suspension with a crossover rear end or a crossover length of track. It's still the PPS3 rear suspension, which I don't think is a bad thing. It's a very, very, very trail capable suspension and it's still pretty playful off trail. So, you know, I think again, that could be a really good advantage. Um, the IGX in the Assault is a great skid, but I think the PPS3 on trail is gonna have the leg up for sure. And then off trail, maybe a bit of a wash. I mean, the, the assault might still have the upper hand there, but um, I think it'll definitely be interesting. The only big drawback I see is being a two inch lug and there not being any other offerings. I think a lot of the US guys aren't gonna wanna to run that track. Um, so obviously you could swap it out with, at your dealer before you pick it up. But uh, yeah, I think a bit of a bummer they didn't offer like a one six. Or like a one, well, they're probably not going to offer a 175 and a 2 inch, but yeah, like a 1.6 inch track. Part of me wonders if Skidoo doesn't really want Lynx competing that directly with like the backcountry. But, you know, who knows? Uh, obviously they they have their reasons for doing the things they're going to do so what i really like about the lynx xterra is that it's almost an assault xcr it has all the perks of the rave re with the length of a backcountry the only drawback i see is it doesn't appear to have the tipped up rails but to be honest that really wasn't that much of a drawback on the riot so i wouldn't let that scare you off if you're in the market for an xterra obviously there's still kind of some differences you don't necessarily have a conventional torsion spring um, uncoupled skid you have the Lynx PPS3 so it is a little bit different but it's definitely exciting to kind of see something that can really do the trails and kind of do the off trail whereas you know the backcountry with that narrower front end some guys were afraid to even try that because of that so see I think the Xterra really hits the mark as far as what could be a really great crossover but it'll just kind of come down to how a lot of those pieces come together to make it either something pretty good that can kind of compete with like the assault in the backcountry or if it's just going to be too niche and not be popular but i lean more towards thinking it's going to be a pretty good sled so definitely excited to see a trail with front end on a 146 out of brp there's also the xterra brutal which is like a kind of a utility sled that's a little bit more meant to be ridden it's got a 20 inch wide track. It's a 154 with tipped up rails. So the Brutal comes with an 850 E-Tech only. It has a radiator for extra cooling. Uh, that's up in the front. It has a 39 inch front end with non-adjustable KYB 36 shocks. And then in the rear, there's a KYB 46 Kashima coated shock, but uh, that doesn't have low speed compression or rebound or high speed compression on it. So this isn't the PPS3 skid. It's called the Easy Ride. The way the rear shock is mounted is a lot more kind of like an RMK rear suspension rather than any of the other Lynx sleds. It's not like the Lynx mountain rear end. It's not like the trail rear end. It's kind of its own thing. 
Um, the coilover shock is mounted at the base of the front arm, so I don't know if it's old tech. Um, I would have loved to have been able to kind of research that, but I wasn't able to find too much on it. Obviously, this sled having a 20-inch wide track that's a 154 with a 2.4 inch lug, it's not really meant for like bashing the trails, um, but this is a really cool mix of crossover and utility. And for the guys out there that want it, I do see this being an awesome sled, so. In the mountains, the new Lynx chassis looks freaking awesome. And uh, I'm a huge fan of it. I can't wait till they have some sort of trail version of it. That's gonna be awesome. When it does happen, I think uh, they did a great job with the bodywork. Right now it's called the Shredder and the Shredder RE. Kind of a cool name, very uh, fitting for the segment. The Shredder RE comes in a 137 or 3700 as they call it, which is really cool. Would love to try something like that. It's kind of like what the Boondock Rari was last year, but I just really can't justify a sled like that. Uh, it, I think it comes with a 2.6 inch lug, which I could swap to something smaller, but then it's got the, their mountain skid in it, and it's just, you know, I'd really be kind of stretching to make that sled work for me. So not something I should be on, but a really cool option and in, Overseas, you can get that with the 850 E-Tech Turbo R, which is wicked. I can only imagine what that sled's like, but not available in the North American market. For some reason, they just don't want us trail guys on a 146 with a turbo, so there it is. So in the mountains for Lynx, there's the Radiant 2 platform. At some point, we're obviously going to see this in the trail market. And styling wise, like I said, I think it's an awesome looking sled, and I'm excited to see what they can do with it. Uh, there's the Shredder DS. You can now have the 850 E-Tech Turbo R. Uh, it's narrower all throughout the sled, of course, like the Dew. The tunnel and snow flap have been shaved down and the rear bumper's been removed on both the Shredder DS and Shredder RE. It has a 15 inch wide track on the DS and it can have a 154 or a 165 with Kashima coated Pro 36 shocks. The Shredder RE saves 35 pounds over last year. It can come in a 154 or a 146. It's got rail reinforcements. It's got all the other goodies that the DS had. It's got 36 millimeter shocks out front and 46 millimeter shocks in the rear overall i'll give the launch like pretty pretty decent accolades i mean it's awesome that they came out with the update to the skidoo it's the g5 you know all that um i think the new touchscreen looks really great would love to try that out um i think depending on what i ride what i order next i think that could be possibly something i get and uh it seems like a pretty awesome new sled uh i'm not always the biggest on um, bodywork refreshes i know i kind of get some hate for that but i don't know why it just i it takes me a little while to, to kind of buy into it i like to kind of see more come um, i'm hoping you know if polaris has something new in the uh the matrix this year maybe a new 900 or something like that i mean i think that's cool I just like, you know, kind of like a, the double whammy. I like the upgraded bodywork and maybe upgraded suspension. I understand that Skidoo just came out with the R-Motion X and the RSX, and I'm sure they spread things out the way they do on purpose, but um, just for me, I really like the Lynx, and if it had updated bodywork, I might take the leap for that, but I, I don't think the Renegade's for me, so I'm not gonna probably end up trying the G5 just because, you know, the Renegade's not the right side for me. If they had it in the backcountry, I might try it, and that's kind of something else I wanted to say. It's definitely a bummer to see the backcountry kind of just taking a back seat all the time. I just don't know why it's been so unchanged since 2019. And, uh, I, it seems like the guys that love them love them, you know what I mean? It's like all they want to be on. And it's just surprising to see that it, it's been so left alone. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it isn't that successful of a sled for Skidoo, so they're not updating it, or maybe it's so successful it doesn't need updates and it still sells well. I don't know what combination of one or the other it could be, but just a bummer to not see that in the G5. I do think that could have swayed me to try it. I think given the state of things in the snowmobile industry, it makes sense, kind of the launch they went with. I think there's a little bit of that. Latest and greatest, got an order to try it. I think it was a really great mountain launch, seemingly. Um, but, you know, it'll probably help Skidoo catch up, especially with the added demand for, like, the Lynx sleds and stuff. So, 
We'll kind of see what everybody else brings. If Polaris is bringing a new engine, man, I don't even know. Like, that's going to be crazy.